and welcome back to Jenny Gets Creative. It's bonus video time, and that's right. I got my hands on the Ohuhu brush markers. This is the first run 48 set of Ohuhu brush markers. Not sponsored. I bought them myself. They finally went on sale on the Canadian Amazon website. I was really afraid they were just going to automatically be out of stock like they are currently on the American site, but they weren't. They were a few minutes later than they said they would be, so when I went on the site and I was waiting and the listing went live, but it was out of stock. I have them! <laughs> so first I'm going to swatch them all out, I'm going to blend them with some of my other brands. I'm going to see what they do with the colorless blenders I have from other brands because no, this set does not have its own colorless blender. That's okay. They're all the same, basically. <laughs> Maybe look for some color tubes. I don't know. And then we're going to get into it and do a piece with just the Ohuhu brush markers. And I'm going to give you all of my thoughts and opinions, what I think of these Ohuhu brush markers, what I think of them just by themselves, how I think they compare to the other brands, do I think they're worth it, and yeah, so excited to finally have these. Let's get into it. Before I get started, I just wanted to address any possible confusion about why I, as a non-sponsored artist, was able to purchase these markers in North America while they're currently sold out on American Amazon. If you pay attention on the Amazon listings for Ohuhu products, you'll see that the orders are fulfilled by Amazon. This means that Ohuhu sends all of their inventory to Amazon's fulfillment centers, and Amazon handles shipping the items out to customers who order them. I'm Canadian, which means I order from the Canadian Amazon website. When Ohuhu announced that their brush markers were released, it was only on the American Amazon website because all of the other regional sites that are carrying Ohuhu products had to wait for their inventory to get to those other countries, go through customs, get sorted into the fulfillment centers, and so on. The set of markers I purchased is very likely from the same production run as the sets that everyone who got their markers in the States before it sold out got. It's just that it took a couple of extra weeks for the Canadian branch to be ready to release them for sale. Australia beat us to it, which I find a bit odd considering they're so far away and we have a huge land border with the states, but whatever. <laughs> so unboxing or unbagging, I guess, these markers, you see the 48 beautiful color tops of markers, a couple small pieces of paper and a plastic sheet. One of the pieces of paper is a little info card with their FAQ on one side and instructions to get 10% off for sharing your experience on the other. The second piece of paper, which I don't think made it onto camera, is their own printed swatch sheet, but if you know me, I gotta swatch them myself. <laughs> the plastic sheet is meant to be used underneath your paper if you're not using a paper that's either thick enough to handle a wet medium like ink, or specially coated to prevent bleed through. It's a cool idea, but of course being rolled a bit to get shoved in a small case, it comes kind of curled up and just not very convenient. I imagine if you left it pressed under heavy books for a long time, it would eventually flatten out on its own. I turned my hairdryer on low heat and warmed it up first before setting it a book on it, and I was able to flatten it very quickly. But the edges did start to warp from the heat a bit, so be careful if you want to go that route. I haven't actually used it yet, since I do have suitable papers for markers, but I think it's a cool idea to include. I also want to talk about the case itself. When I got my Touch 5 and Touch New markers in the past, they came in similar black zippered nylon pouches, and I was expecting this to be the same. The pouches those touch markers came in are quite thin and flimsy. One of them didn't even have a handle on top. And like most cheap products that ship from China, they have a bit of a polluted air smell to them. The case the Ohuhu markers came in is definitely a higher quality nylon material. It's a bit thicker and because of that, the pouch stays standing without all the markers in it. It does have a nice little handle on top for convenient carrying. 
As far as how it smells, it reminds me of a new suitcase from a, a department store. Markers themselves have a round barrel design with decent sized tabs on the caps to prevent rolling. They're all white with silver printed on the barrels, which is a little hard to read because it's reflective, but the caps have colored ends to indicate the ink color, and the printing on the ends is matte, so it's very readable. I know originally Mahuhu markers had the color names on the caps, and then more recent redesigns of the markers removed that and just put the pigment numbers on the ends. With the brush marker designs, the color names are back. The caps have both the pigment color code and the pigment name. For the most part, the colors of the caps are quite accurate to the ink color, and the caps do fit nicely on the other end of the marker if that's something you care about. The only real negative I can think of with the physical design of the barrels and caps is that there's no pigment code or name on the barrel itself. So if you have both caps off and you've done that to two similar colors, you might end up putting the wrong caps on the wrong markers and never know the difference. <laughs> In terms of color range, I do like the variety they've given us. I appreciate the fact that we have both warm grays and cool grays, and I absolutely love the range of greens in this set. I've seen a few other YouTubers review this set, so I know I'm not the first to notice, but this set definitely doesn't have really pale shades, except for cool gray zero. And because of that, it doesn't have many options for paler skin tones. If you're good with a colorless blender and you have one available to you, because this set didn't come with one. You could certainly dilute colors to get around that, but if you only have these 48 markers, you might have trouble getting really pale shades. I did some one-to-one -one blend tests, both with these Ohuhu markers blending into each other and blending with other brands. For Ohuhu to Ohuhu, I blended Anise and Yellow Green, Aubergine and Light Violet, and Rose Beige and Sand Pink. All three pairs blended nicely with the feathering technique, though I would say the rose beige and salmon pink blend was most successful, and the anise and yellow green blend was least successful. Then I blended with other brands. I blended oranges with Copic, blending Ohuhu's orange into Copic's pumpkin, and the results are similar to Ohuhu with itself. For Spectra AD, which are the same as Blick Studio, by the way, I blended Ohuhu's terracotta with Spectra's terracotta, and again got a very similar result. For Windsor Newton, I blended Windsor Newton's Amethyst into Ohuhu's Lavender, and as with just about every other alcohol marker brand, Windsor Newton just ate into the Ohuhu pigment and took over. I have a few new Sketchbox signature brush markers than just the neutral gray now, so I tested that as well. I blended Sketchbox's Coral Reef with Ohuhu's Coral Pink and got the best blend yet. <laughs> Next I tried Bienyo. At first I blended Bienyo's Pastel Rose into Ohuhu's Pastel Rose and it turns out they're exactly the same shade. So then I tried again blending the same Bienyo marker with Ohuhu's Pastel Pink. and. Didn't get much of a blend. <laughs> Finally, just for the fun of it, I tested the infamously unblendable double line by Genvana markers, which sometimes play nice with other brands but absolutely do not blend with each other. I blended double lines Cerulean Blue with Ohuhu's Royal Blue, and although it's definitely not perfect, it did a decent job of blending. So to summarize, Ohuhu's brush markers blend just as well with Copic, Spectra AD, and Sketchbox Signature as they do with each other, marginally well with Piano and Double Line, and like every other brand out there, they lose the battle to Windsor Newton's oddly strong formula. Next, I tested every brush marker colorless blender I own on a swatch of Ohuhu's Geranium Red, and they all did basically the same thing, which was to dilute the pigment they touched, and they all diluted about the same amount. Finally, before moving on and doing a piece with these markers, I decided to look at all my swatch sheets from my Copic, Spectra 80, and Windsor Newton markers, and see which colors might be interesting to directly compare to the shades in this 48 set of Ohuhu markers. 
Ohuhu's yellow-green is just a touch darker than Copic's yellow-green. Ohuhu's vivid green is a dupe for Copic's Nile green. Ohuhu's turquoise green light is just a touch darker than Copic's aqua. Ohuhu's brilliant blue is just a touch lighter than Copic's lapis lazuli. Ohuhu's mauve shadow is almost a dupe for Copic's mauve, but I'd say it's a little bit cooler. Ohuhu's Potato Brown is very close to Copic's Sepia and Windsor Newton's Saddle Brown. Ohuhu's Sky Blue is a dupe for Windsor Newton's Cadet Blue. Ohuhu's Cerulean Blue is very similar to Spectra 80's True Blue, but it looks a little warmer to me. Ohuhu's Pastel Pink, which is not very pastel in my opinion, is a dupe for Spectra 80's Pink. And Ohuhu's Bud Green is a dupe for Spectra 80's Apple Green. Obviously, this isn't an exhaustive list because I don't own the full range in any brand, but those are the similar shades I found. I also wanted to note a few shades that share exact names with colors in other brands that definitely do not match. Copic's Barium Yellow is much paler. Spectra 80's Orange is a little lighter than Ohuhu's Orange. Ohuhu's Royal Blue is nothing like Windsor Newton's Royal Blue. And while Ohuhu's Terracotta lands on the brown side of the spectrum, Spectra 80's Terracotta is much more orange. So with all of that swatching and testing out of the way, I decide to do a piece using just these Ohuhu brush markers. I'm using my Strathmore 400 series coated marker paper, which is more similar to the heavier Express It blending card than to the much thinner Copic slash Transotype coated marker paper. I'm also making use of my Copic Colorless Splendor since, again, the Ohuhu set didn't come with one. And for the final white details, I'm using a Sakura Jelly Roll White Gel Pen in size 10 bold. I started with Warm Grey 1 for the white parts of the cat's coat, then blocked in the background using GY6 Anis, which is the lightest green in the set. I filled in the cat's coat with YR4 Salmon Pink, then added markings using a combination of BR2 Potato Brown, BR1 Raw Umber, and YR5 Terracotta. I used the Colorless Splendor on R10 Pastel Pink to add a pink hint to the inner ears, and just the Pastel Pink marker itself to add pink to the nose. The eyes are a mix of YR4 Salmon Pink with a combination of PB1 Sky Blue and PB2 Brilliant Blue. Then I darkened up parts of the eyes with Cool Grey 7, and finally added Pupil Slits with the black. I added long grassy plants using GY5 Absinthe, and then I went in with that white gel pen to give the cat whiskers and add eye shine. This piece is on a roughly A5 size piece of paper. And according to my raw footage files time data, it took me a little less than 45 minutes in real time. Overall, I really do like these markers. These are the firmest brush nib I've ever worked with in an alcohol marker, but I didn't feel that it was a disadvantage at all. I was actually surprised when I went back and sampled each of the other six brands just to confirm that Ohuhu's brush nib is the firmest, because they really felt quite nice to use. I'm a little disappointed that my Jazza's Jazzy Art Box isn't here yet, because I'd like to compare them to the new nibs on the Spectrum Noir markers. I know originally Jazza thought those were quite firm, and the markers in his box have their new softer nibs, so I guess I'll let you know when I do that unboxing how the Ohuhu nibs compare. If you've been able to try out these markers already, drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of them. And if you haven't yet, are you going to? Are you waiting on them to restock? Have you tried Ohuhu's bullet nib markers? I haven't, so this was my first experience with the brand. They've absolutely been added to my go-to collection at my desk. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you're new here, please do subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I appreciate the view, and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye, guys.